I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system and I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. Let's start with the CPU performance. The game performs absolutely horribly. When you enter any populated area or town, the frame rates tank. The game's optimization is horrendous right now. Just to make you understand how garbage the CPU performance is right now, the R5 3600X is getting around 23 FPS and its total utilization is 83%. This is the most absurd thing I have ever seen. It's not like the CPU is not being properly utilized. It is, but it looks like something in these areas is way too demanding on the CPU, which means that the game is very poorly optimized. It feels like the devs forgot to make an optimization pass because I have no idea how this got okayed to launch. Now let's get into the settings. Starting with the texture quality, excusing the time of day change, each option gradually increases texture quality noticeably, and I didn't see any VRAM usage difference, which might indicate that this game handles VRAM usage automatically. As for the hair setting, I could only find this bald guy as a showcase, since there's a shortage of models in the wasteland right now. This setting affects head hair and beards on all NPCs, and each option gradually improves hair depth and shading, not the quality or amount of actual hair strands like in other games. The performance impact is minimal and gradually increases with each option use high for the best balance. I tested the object detail setting thoroughly and couldn't find what it affected. If you know what it does, please tell us in the comments. There seems to be a small performance impact with Epic, so use high. The effects quality is the same here. I couldn't tell what it did, and I tested many things like fires, smokes, firing weapons, bullet impacts, to cutscenes, post processing effects, and lighting comparisons, and I still wasn't able to tell the difference between low and epic, and performance seems to be within the margin of error. I recommend to use medium just to be safe. The material setting is kind of like a second texture quality setting, and each option has a noticeable impact to image quality, except for Epic, which looks the same as high in this scene, and it seems to perform the same across all options. For the best balance, use high. For post-processing, Going from low to medium enables vignetting, which is the dark halo around the edges of the screen, and high enables bloom, or a higher quality bloom effect, while epic seems to look the same as high, and each option comes with a small performance impact. Use high for the best balance. The anti-aliasing setting should only work when not using upscaling, it just doesn't make any difference to image quality, and the entire image looks like a shimmery mess. It doesn't really matter, since 99% of users will be using upscaling anyway. As for motion blur, it seems to only apply to cutscenes. The motion blur quality setting doesn't seem to make any difference. Use high to be safe. As for the motion blur strength setting, I found that 100% can be too much for my liking, and a value of 50% is more comfortable to the eyes, if you like motion blur, otherwise you can turn it off. I could only find the depth of field effect to work in cutscenes, so it's possible it doesn't apply to gameplay, 
but I may be wrong. The effect itself is subtle and I only noticed it when comparing the footage side by side. I recommend using high to be safe, although you can use epic if you like. For the light shaft setting, I tested many scenes, both indoors like here and outdoors looking at the sun through trees, and I couldn't see the effect in action. Although this scene may look like the light shafts are working, it's actually Unreal Engine 5's lumen lighting, which has this effect. If you found this setting to actually work, tell us in the comments, otherwise it might be broken. For the upscaling method, going from native TAA to TSR at 65%, which is the nearest value to the quality option, looked similar to native TAA. FSR quality looks blurry, shimmery, and horrible. XCSS ultra quality looks a bit better in this scene, while DLSS quality looks the clearest. For the motion test, both native TAA and TSR at 65% looked a bit soft and blurry, while FSR quality looked shimmery and unstable. XCSS ultra quality starts to break up in this test. DLSS quality, to no surprise, looks the most stable in this test as well. Indoors, the shading quality has a noticeable improvement when going from low to medium, while anything higher looks the same, and outdoors seem to look the same as indoors. Anything higher than medium doesn't make any noticeable difference to image quality, while still impacting performance a little bit. Use medium for slightly better performance without losing out on image quality. Global illumination gradually improves bounce lighting with each option. The improvements are mainly seen indoors. Low looks flat, while medium and above start to look better. As for outdoors, going from low to medium looks a little bit better, but the improvement is hard to notice. While anything higher looks very similar to medium, but each option has a small performance cost, so use medium for the best balance. The reflections in this game look terrible, and this setting only affects a small portion of the reflections, with each option gradually improving reflection quality, up until epic, which looks no different to high. The difference can be seen on the helicopter reflection in this scene, and it's still hard to tell the difference unless comparing side by side. Use high for the best balance. The shadow quality gradually improves with each option, with low looking unacceptably shimmery, and each option higher looks more stable and with better shadow filtering. This setting on Epic also increases the max shadow render distance, which can easily be seen from any high vantage point. As for performance, Epic has the highest performance impact, while High has a small performance impact. I recommend High for the best balance. At first, the cloud setting may not seem to make any noticeable difference to cloud quality, but when comparing the options in this stormy scene, low, medium, and high look the same, while Epic has much more accurate sky lighting and direction, completely changing the lighting of the scene. Thankfully, the performance impact on Epic is negligible, so use Epic for the best image quality at no notable performance cost. I still haven't encountered easily visible fog that I could capture footage for, so this will have to do. Although we can't really tell the fog quality difference, we can still see the settings impact on performance, with low, medium, 
and high performing the same and epic having a noticeable performance impact i recommend using high the sky setting doesn't seem to make any noticeable difference to sky quality in this scene but in a stormy scene it looks like the sky is broken on low while on medium it looks fixed and anything higher looks the same use medium here The foliage quality setting controls the density and draw distance of trees and foliage, with each option having a noticeable improvement on both image quality and frame rates. As for popping, it's inevitable even on epic. For performance, medium has a small impact, while high and epic have a more noticeable impact to FPS. I recommend medium for the best balance. The environment draw distance setting is supposed to control the draw distance of something, but after many tests, I found that it made no impact it's probably broken, as nothing in this game was affected by this setting, and performance didn't change either. Use high for now, just to be safe. For the performance comparisons, let's start with the more GPU intensive test first, going from max settings to optimized settings at native 1440p only had a minimal improvement to frame rates, but now we are comfortably above 30 fps and we lowered the VRAM usage by 1 gigabyte, using DLSS quality made a significant increase to the FPS, where frame rates further increased from an average of 41 FPS to 57 FPS, and VRAM usage decreased even further. But what about the more CPU intensive areas in the game? Well, in this area, even at max settings at native 1440p, we can see the GPU is still waiting on the CPU at under 30 FPS at times. Yes it's that bad and using the optimized settings at native 1440p only made a small improvement to the frame rates but it's not enough as we are still dipping below 30 fps regularly using dlss quality increased the average fps a bit now it's mostly above 30 fps but the horrendous cpu performance is still making us dip below it taking a look at the one percent lows Across all three tests, it's still dipping to 20 FPS, and it stays there consistently, meaning the frame times are so unstable in this area, lowering settings and resolution won't improve the 1% lows. I can't believe this game released in this state, it needed way more time in the oven. This game's optimization can only be fixed by the devs and I recommend you wait for patches instead of playing the game in this state, which I plan on covering on my channel. So, subscribe to know just when performance improves for Stalker 2.